my particular area is coronary artery disease, which is the leading cause of death in the world. And one of the problems that we have is that we know that when we assess patients with coronary artery disease, it's a subtle changes in blood pressure and flow inside the arteries, which really help us make good decisions about how to treat people. There's a lot riding on uh, these decisions because we can decide to just treat patients with tablets, we can stent open their arteries, or we could perform major heart surgery. So our assessment of patients with coronary artery disease is really important. The simulation allows us to simulate the blood flow through the coronary arteries and actually predict and compute those changes in blood pressure and flow, rather than having to measure them directly by putting a wire down the artery, which is much more invasive and much more expensive. The medical world are quite late to use simulation for good reason, because the human body is much more difficult to parameterize than more traditional engineering applications. If you're simulating the flow of air over an aircraft wing, you can know the pressure and viscosity of the air. You can know the tensile strength of steel to quite a high accuracy. Uh, the human body is completely different. When we model our coronary arteries, it's very difficult to know how stiff a coronary artery is, um, because it's different in everybody the exact viscosity of blood, it changes in everybody. So lots of the parameters we need to parameterize our model are unknown. I think simulation can be used to help explain treatment selection to patients in the future. We've been looking at using our coronary artery models to predict how someone might respond to a stent and different stenting strategies. So we can actually prepare those analyses before we see a patient and select the best treatment option for that particular patient's anatomy and physiology uh, well before we actually deliver it. Computational time has traditionally been a problem with using simulation, uh, especially if you want decisions very quickly. The decisions that we make about how to treat coronary artery disease really have to be made within a couple of minutes. Um, we can't really spend hours performing simulations to then tell the patients the next step of their surgery or their procedure. Uh, we've developed some acceleration techniques locally as part of our research um, and we've, we've accelerated our workload for example from about 36 hours computation time down to around three minutes. I think over the next five to ten years what we'll see is increasing momentum with simulation research and we'll see that start to trickle into the clinical workplace. There will be uh, applications for clinicians to use which are produced. They'll slowly gain regulatory approval and be free to use. It's important that clinicians are aware of how these tools work, their strengths and their limitations, and then we can use them to their full potential. We use ANSYS for our simulation. Uh, Sheffield University and ANSYS have a long-standing relationship. In fact, some of the original code that ANSYS used was written in Sheffield, so we go back quite a long way.